Hi, my name's Jade and I'm a medical student in Leicester. In this video, we will cover anxiety disorders, including phobic disorders, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, OCD and PTSD. Let's begin. First, can you think of any symptoms of anxiety? These are all symptoms of anxiety, and as you can see, all the systems are affected. Psychological, cardiovascular, respiratory, gastrointestinal, genitourinary, and neuromuscular. Given these symptoms of anxiety disorder, can you think of any differential diagnoses to consider? Some medical causes for these symptoms include hypothyroidism, primary or secondary brain malignancy, anemia, hypoglycemia, and dementia. Substance-related causes to consider include steroid use, high doses of thyroxine, alcohol intoxication or withdrawal, cannabis, and caffeine use. Some psychiatric differentials to consider include schizophrenia, depression, and somatoform disorder. Do you remember the difference between somatoform disorder and hypochondrial disorder? When physical symptoms are caused by mental or emotional factors, it is called somatization. Somatoform disorder is at the extreme end of the scale of somatization as the unexplained physical symptoms persist long term or are severe. Hypochondrial disorder is when a patient is certain they have a condition despite no evidence to show it. First, let's talk about the most common anxiety disorder, specific phobias. A phobia describes an irrational, intense fear which the patient recognizes as excessive. This fear and anxiety is triggered by specific situations and causes avoidance of circumstances that cause anxiety. This is unlike generalized anxiety disorder, which is anxiety in many environments and circumstances with no known triggers. Phobias can be normal in childhood, but when they persist beyond preschool age, they become pathological. Some phobias include agoraphobia, social phobia, and specific phobias. Agoraphobia is a fear of being in situations where escape might be difficult or that help wouldn't be available if things go wrong. This can include crowds, public spaces, traveling alone or away from home. The fear is maintained by avoidance and deconditioning. Agoraphobia is associated with panic attacks. Patients usually have insight and recognize that their fear is unreasonable and excessive. Social phobia is marked fear and avoidance of social situations due to a fear of negative evaluation by others, humiliation and embarrassment. People with social anxiety disorder only experience symptoms of anxiety and emotional distress when in social situations. Patients usually have good insight and recognize that their fear is excessive and problematic. Specific phobias are often caused by a conditioning event in childhood. They are characterized by marked fear and avoidance of a specific situation or object, which the patient again recognizes as excessive. Specific phobias are managed conservatively by avoiding anxiety-inducing substances like caffeine, supporting the patient to stop misusing substances if applicable, and treating comorbid psychiatric disorders. Specific phobias are also managed with exposure therapy and short-term courses of benzodiazepines can be given if symptoms are very severe or as a one-off, for example before a flight for those who have pathological fears of flying. Agoraphobia is also managed with CBT, graduated exposure techniques, and possibly an SSRI. Social anxiety disorder is managed using CBT first line. The goal of CBT is to identify and challenge negative thoughts and to modify them. Other management options include graduated exposure therapy, psychodynamic psychotherapy, and medications like SSRIs or SNRIs. Patients with phobic disorders should be referred to secondary care if they have a history of, or are at risk of, self-harm, suicide, and or self-neglect. Now let's move on to panic disorder. Panic disorder describes a fear of one's own bodily changes and psychological reactions. 
This results in recurrent, severe panic attacks that are not restricted to any situation or circumstance and are unpredictable. Panic attacks are abrupt, discrete episodes of intense fear lasting for a few minutes. They're associated with symptoms of autonomic arousal and anxiety. Avoidance of situations that may trigger these panic attacks is called agoraphobia. Risk factors for panic disorder include being female, going through major stressful events, family history of panic disorder, recent trauma, and other mental health problems. Panic disorder is treated with CBT first line. Other management options include self-help, support groups, and encouraging exercise and a healthy lifestyle. SSRIs are the first line pharmacological treatment. Generalized anxiety disorder describes an ongoing, uncontrollable, widespread worry that the patient recognizes as excessive and inappropriate on most days for at least six months. The content of the worries may change and vary. Worries about worries are called type 2 worries. In GAD, there are both type 1 and type 2 worries, which differentiates it from other anxiety disorders. Physical symptoms of anxiety are often present, including insomnia, muscle tension, tremor, restlessness, chest pain, difficulties concentrating, and headaches. Autonomic hyperactivity may also be present, which manifests as sweating, dilated pupils, and tachycardia. GAD is very common, with between 2-4% of the UK population being affected. It affects more females than males. Investigations to be done in patients with suspected GAD include FBCs to rule out anemia or infection, TFTs and glucose to rule out organic causes of the symptoms. Patients are managed using a biopsychosocial approach. First-line pharmacological therapy is an SSRI which is an anxiolytic. SNRIs like venlafaxine can be used second-line and gabapentin or pregabalin third-line. Propranolol is often used to help relieve some of the physical symptoms of anxiety, like palpitations and tremor. Anxiolytic drugs must be continued for at least a year. Remember, this is unlike depression where medications are continued for at least six months. Comorbidities, including depression and substance misuse, should also be treated. Psychoeducational groups, low-intensity CBT and applied relaxation can help in the management of GAD. Also signpost patients to support groups, self-help resources and advise them to practice mindfulness, eat healthily and exercise. Obsessive compulsive disorder is characterised by the combination of unwanted, recurring, distressing, intrusive thoughts or images, such as being contaminated or being hurt, and the performance of neutralising behaviours to manage the distress. Compulsions can be overt, which means seen by others, or covert, which is not seen by others. OCD is associated with conditions like depression, schizophrenia, Tourette's and anorexia nervosa. For a diagnosis to be made, the obsessions and compulsions must be present on most days for at least two weeks. They must also be repetitive, distressing, not pleasurable to the patient and also not resistible. The obsessions and compulsions must also be interfering in the patient's day-to-day life. OCD is managed with CBT, a high-dose SSRI, psychoeducation, self-help and distracting techniques. Lastly, let's talk about post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD is caused by exposure to an event or situation of exceptionally threatening or catastrophic nature. It is characterized by persistent remembering or reliving of the situation or event, avoidance of similar situations, emotional numbing, increased arousal and possibly the inability to recall the event. These symptoms start within six months of the event. PTSD is different to adjustment disorder. Adjustment disorder is caused by an identifiable, non-catastrophic psychosocial stressor, such as breakdown of a relationship or loss of a relative. PTSD is commonly associated with comorbidities like depression, other anxiety disorders, and substance misuse, especially alcoholism. The trauma screening questionnaire and post-traumatic diagnostic scale can be used to help diagnose PTSD. Management depends on the severity of symptoms and time elapsed since the traumatic event. 
If symptoms are mild and present within one month of the trauma, then watchful waiting is an appropriate approach with regular follow-up appointments and escalation of treatment if the symptoms worsen. Trauma-focused CBT or eye movement desensitization and reprocessing are two psychotherapy options available. Drug treatment can be used if psychotherapy is ineffective or not suitable for the patient. Metazapine is often the drug of choice. Thanks for watching.